Well, I was getting a massage yesterday. We were talking about it, and um, my back was on the massage table, and I was describing her like it was kind of just like this, like I was looking up at the sky, and I felt like you know when you see somebody get hurt on TV and like you see everybody come dap them up and like give her love and like it was like all that happened in a blur, but it was all like. The trainers came up to me, I'm on the ground. I wasn't in shock, I was just more so like, I've been hurt before, but not like this. And I knew something was wrong, you know what I'm saying? I knew something had to be up. They go with some tempo. I'd like to see that, a little attitude right there from the Arizona Cardinals. And get to the line quickly, snapping it to Murray. It's a play fake, Murray setting up, looking deep, now takes off, running to the right at the 35, at the 40, and dives to about the 44 yard line, a gain of three for Kyler Murray. And got an injured Cardinal. It's Kyler who went down very awkwardly that time as he tried to cut. Oh, no. Non-contact. He cut right, then tried to cut left and just buckled. And there was a Patriot player right there who called to the Cardinal sideline to bring on the training staff. I never felt that before. And then I was just on my back looking up. And it was like everybody was like, you know those movies where like you can hear everybody's voices at one time, but it don't sound like one person. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody was kind of like hazed out. The right leg, just as he plants, there's just something went out on him. He just went to the ground. Oh boy. I I, I was crying like once we were carting off the field, and then it all kind of hit me like I'm one of those people. I believe you know everything happens for a reason. Uh, and then being in the training room, my, my family came in. Uh, I've obviously, I know people that have, you know, done this injury. I've made that cut a million times. Obviously, when something like that happens, you kind of know, like, it's probably not nothing normal that happened. Just extend the leg. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, I didn't know. I did not know. My whole career, like football, baseball, a little bit of basketball I played <laughs> growing up, <laughs> never really lost. Stayed, Even, I mean, football there. especially, never really lost. You know, playing at Allen, uh, A&M, going to OU. Yeah, it's frustrating, it's frustrating. Especially when, you know, I feel like since I've been in the league, all we've done is go up. You know, I got better every year and then to take like a you know, hit a, hit a wall year four after, especially after going through the whole contract thing. Like, I got COVID in camp. I hurt my wrist in camp, so I missed a lot of those reps. Um, and then trying to play catch up during the season. It was just like, it was just kind of like a compilation of f***ed up things going on. But you work your whole life to kind of, I've done everything right as far as off the field, on the field, you know what I'm saying? I try to try to treat people the right way, but it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? I think winning winning cures all, and it's been tough to do that, you know what I'm saying, uh, with some of the circumstances that we had to deal with, but like I said, I think we're heading the right direction. Your surgery was on January 3rd? January 3rd. Mm -hmm. you know, when did you start getting back into your training rooms and, and the gym after that? Uh, you know, before I got surgery, everybody was telling me because I have meniscus that you'd have to be on crutches for like six weeks, not non bearing, you know, non, not be able to put pressure on it for six weeks. But I was day one, right out of surgery, they let me put pressure on it. So I think that was helpful. I was in the training room the next day. Nobody can really prepare you for how that shit's gonna feel. You know, it was after, I, after the injury happened, I re prehabbed for like two weeks or whatever. And that wasn't that bad. But after the surgery, that first like two weeks was f terrible. You know, moving was tough. Uh, and then you're, you're just kind of helpless. Like you, you're dependent on everybody. But luckily I have, you know, people around me that, that help me out. I feel like recovery is a big part. Like, you know, you, everybody gets hurt. You want to come back as quick as possible.
I mean, this is this is all I know, really. You know, I'm not trying to make it sound cliche, but it's what, I, what I've been doing my whole life, nonstop. Let's get it. There ain't much you can do to put you under that type of, that type of shit. Damn. Oh, man. Oh, for real, for what? Oklahoma tomorrow. Yeah, you should pull up on the statue. Yeah. Welcome everyone to the Kyle Murray statue unveiling tonight. You made it. You did it. We're all here. Man, being here is uh, surreal. I know for Kyler, your family, just soak it all in. When I came to OU, Kyler was actually my host. I ain't gonna go into too much of what where he took me. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely worked. He got me here. Uh, and, and from that point on, uh, I was on the B team with Kyler. And every day, Kyler went out there like, we're gonna beat their ass. We're gonna beat Xavier. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna dominate him today. And that's what we did. We went out there and dominated. And we used to kill him in practice. So that whole season, like every day, you can count on him to do his job. He leads by example. When he's up, he's the same guy. When he's down, he's the same guy. Never really seen you rattle. And man, just take advantage of this opportunity, man. Be with your family. Everybody love you here. And we just happy for you, man. Congrats. It's honestly surreal. Uh, you know, to have my family here, my support cast, uh, a whole bunch of people that I'm just now meeting, uh, support me. My teammates, man, this means the world to me. It means the world to me. I got a bad habit. Bad habit of downplaying moments like this in my career, uh, but this is pretty special. Regardless of this statue, I just want to let everybody know, man, I just, you know, I try to beat myself every day, work hard, earn these guys' respect and, you know, put my best foot forward. And this is what, you know, came out of it. Boomer! All right, who wants a T-shirt? Who wants a T-shirt out there? Where's my T-shirts at? There he is. Got his hair did. This is unbelievable. Sooner Nation, look at you. For as far as the eye can see, you're here today to congratulate one of your own favorite sons. How about this? The Arizona Cardinals organization is here, and their head coach, Jonathan Gannon, is with us here today. He's right there. And ladies and gentlemen, the guest of honor, the seventh Heisman Trophy winner in the history of OU football, Kyler Murray is here. All right, you guys ready? I'm going to start the countdown and I need your help. Three, two, one. Point. Oh.
to have this many people out here show love to me, support me. Uh, you know, like I said last night, I just wanted to give my all every time I touch the field to my teammates, to my coaches, this whole university, uh, the fans, man, it was a blessing to be here. Uh, I appreciate everybody here. This is a surreal moment for me, man. Uh, can't thank y'all enough. I cannot thank y'all enough. Um, thank you. Boomer. To be immortalized, to have a statue is like something, you know, I walk by those statues every day and, um, you know, I always envision these things, but, um, you know, for it to actually, you know, come to fruition and be there, uh, no, nah, it, was, it was a lot to, you know, take in, but it was, it was, you know, it was a great moment. Somebody said that the coaches would be there, but just having them there, just, you know, uh, the support off rip, you know, they only been in the building for maybe a month or so, however long it was, and for them to fly out to Norman in the middle of nowhere, you know, during the draft process to come see me, uh, my statue get put up. That was a big deal, you know. It's my first, it's really my first um, kind of coaching change since I was in college and Coach Stoops retired. Um, but, you know, Coach Riley was already on the staff, so I already knew him. This is a whole, you know, one team out, bringing another one in. So it's, it's pretty different for me, but it's been seamless. You know what I mean? JG hit it off. Um, you know, he sees things the way I see things. You know, he can relate to the guys, and he, you know, genuinely feels like he believes in the guys and is trying to get the guys better, um, me better. I feel like, you, you know, you run through a wall for that type of guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the type of energy that he brings. So it's been good. We need touchdowns. Let's go. You got Israel Wolfork, you know, can you talk yeah, a little bit about it? your relationship with him so far? You know, this is a totally new offense for me, new uh, system, um, terminology. But... I'm picking it up pretty quickly, but he's been a main part of me picking it up. Um, him, Drew, Connor, um, you know, obviously seeing the other quarterbacks take the reps and stuff, me getting mental reps. Um, it's been great, you know, and uh, I think it's new for everybody. That's one thing that, you know, we're all learning at the same time. It's not just me, you know, back to the question as far as like the chip on my shoulder, or, like what, what type of energy I'm coming in with the season. Like I feel free in a sense, you know, especially with the change of upstairs in the organization. I feel like, you know, they've done a great job ever since they came in, uh, holding people accountable, you know, the leadership. Uh, they're really trying to build something from the ground up. So the offense, the, the ins and outs of it, um, it, it's the way we're going. I feel like personally, like there's the sky, you know, the sky's the limit. Run today? Yeah, I did. What yeah, I do? Bro. I did a. Uh, he said fourteen point something, fifteen point something. Fifteen MPHs? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean it. It's getting You're better. Getting it up. It's getting better. You don't get to do this much. Every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. Got to stay in throwing shape. A lot of kids have talent. Talent doesn't equate to success. Lumberfield dry. Huh? Dry. 
This ball? I know, it's because we're in Arizona. Feels different here than at home. We was at practice, and I'm like, why the f does the ball feel like this? We played the Panthers, and the ball just felt amazing. Like, That's crazy. That's crazy. Climate. How it affects the level. It's, it's all about your mindset. And, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. You know what I mean? And just, you know, first couple of years, you know, had, had some success. And last year was a tough year. And he'll get better as a result of just not only the injury, but how they, how they played last year. Now, mind you, football is the ultimate team sport. And that's why it's the, it's the greatest game in sports, football. Because it takes all 53. But back to Kyler, I mean, you know, this first time he's ever been injured. First time he's ever left the field on a card. First time he's ever had that feeling. He's got a new leadership in town, and he's excited about that. And, and uh, the best of Kyler is yet to come. The best of Kyler is yet to come. Do you think this injury can be a positive thing for you in the long run? It's got to be a positive. Like, there's no, there's really no option for it to be a negative. I feel like you get your little grace period, you know, like as soon as it happens, let the feelings take over. But after that, I mean, we, we got to go. You know, it's like life, life doesn't stop. You know, the job, the job doesn't stop. Well, my ultimate goal is to get better and obviously win Super Bowls. That's, that's my goal. But I've grown a lot off the field and on the field, whether, you know, trying to show people that now, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wiser, you know, um, emotionally, you know, learning how to, you know, be one with the emotions, understanding, you know, how to talk to certain people. Some people may be able to take the harsh way, which I'm naturally that way, or do I have to soften it up and, you know, give them, the, give them a little love? Let's go, we good. Let's go, let's go. We straight, we straight, solid. Yeah, definitely want to, you know, start impacting community more, you know, trying to figure out ways to, to give back and do that, um, which will be coming up soon. What do you do away from the game off the field? What are your hobbies? That I like to play chess. Obviously, the world thinks I'm a professional Call of Duty player, but that's definitely not the case. <laughs> that's just, you know, that's what me and my boys, we, that's another form of, you know, us getting to be with each other, you know, when they're across the world. I love to I love to look good, love to shop. It's probably probably a problem, probably an addiction that needs to needs to slow down, but you only live once. <laughs> so that, that's that's kind of the couple of things I like to do. And I'm learning, I'm I'm starting to enjoy uh traveling. And like, you know, I n I have never really been able to like go sightseeing and stuff because I've never been on vacation, you know, like I said as a kid. Our first vacation, I was probably two years into the league, three years into like I've never been on vacation, you know. Um, just due to always playing football, basketball, baseball. Um, guys going on spring break, you know, I was playing baseball. You know, the football team leaves to go to a, a certain island or whatever. Like, I, I gotta play, I gotta stay back and play baseball. So now that I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize, like, like I said, we only have once, you know, so I, I want to get out and see more and go, go to different places, experience different things. Nothing crazy. Nobody knows when I'm in Hawaii, you know what I'm saying, working out. But yeah. But it's good though. It's good. Whoa! Who knew I would make it this far? They hated they never believe me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah. Well I can go faster, but you know, I don't really know. Like it's like that gray area, you don't know when, you know, how much how much weight I can put on it. But it's only been two weeks for real, so you know it's, it's uh I feel good about where we at right now.
you look uh, I look further down the line seems like we got a long way to go ideally you know I want to be back by week one but that's the goal at the end of the day that's the goal but I can't really look that far ahead because gotta take it one day at a time Ugh. I'm ready to go 